Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our three-day-per-week, 12 Minutes of Wisdom podcast. This is day 380 of our trek, and today is Philosophy Friday. Every Friday, we will ponder the truths about life and creating your living legacy. Today, we will consider the constant, predictable pattern of change within the cycles and seasons of life. We are broadcasting from our studios at the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. On Wednesday, we invested the day with our local client, assisting them with their monthly billing and other back office duties. After we had finished with the client, we went shopping for all the food and supplies for the Chamberlain reunion, which starts Friday evening and runs through Monday morning. Some of our family will only be in for one day, but overall participation is expected 75 to 100 family members in attendance. While we did not complete all the projects that we had planned, the most important ones were finished, and we are ready for the family to arrive. My sister Rebecca and sister-in-law Anne helped Paula prepare the meals on Thursday, and our nephew Adam came up with Rebecca to help me with some of the remaining projects that I worked on. While change is a constant part of our lives, being able to renovate the big house also gives us the realization about how important a solid foundation in life really is. With the house being over 110 years old, it is still as grand and beautiful as ever. With all the fast-paced changes in our lives, a strong, solid, lasting foundation is an important part of the living legacy which each of us should work towards. As part of the cycle and seasons of life, today on our trek, we will explore the constant, predictable patterns of change. The tide comes in and then recedes. The sun rises, giving lights, and then sets, bringing darkness. Droughts plague the farm fields of the world, followed by the rain in abundance. On this day, we swelter under the intense heat of the July sun and soon will clothe ourselves against the penetrating cold of the midwinter storm. Prosperity brings her abundant opportunities and rewards, but will withdraw at a future time when confronted with the receding business climates. A smile gives way to a tear, as does joy to sorrow and jubilation to tragedy. Close friends become hated enemies. The guns and bloodshed of war are followed by the stillness of a temporary peace. For each of us existing on a spinning blue-white sphere called Earth, confidence is replaced with the passage of time by doubt, patience is replaced by stress, expectancy by boredom, and achievement by disillusionment. The wheel of life continues its constant turn. All human emotions appear, disappear, and appear once again. We sit in amazement as a role of spectators, as a generation living in morality becomes an immoral generation, giving us cause to predict the end of the world as did our forefathers when confronted by the same dilemma generations before. The confrontations, disappointments, and challenges of life are treated by each generation as though they are the first to experience such events, when in fact the pre-Christian years even saw the same occurrences both appear and dissolve. In Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verses 4 through 11, Solomon describes it in this way, Generations come and generations go, but the earth never changes. The sun rises and the sun set then hurries around to rise again. The wind blows south and then turns north. Round and round it goes, blowing in circles. Rivers run into the sea, but the sea is never full. Then the waters return again to the rivers and flows out again to the sea. Everything is worrisome beyond description. No matter how much we see, we are never satisfied. No matter how much we hear, we are not content. History merely repeats itself. It has all been done before. Nothing under the sun is truly new. Sometimes people say, here is something new, but actually it is old. Nothing is ever truly new. We don't remember what happened in the past, and in future generations, no one will remember what we are doing now. For all of us, the only constant factor in life is our feeling and attitudes towards life. A major challenge faced by us all is that we learn to experience the changing of life cycles without being changed by them. To make a constant and conscious effort to improve ourselves in the face of changing circumstances is to assure a tolerance for winter's life events and to permit ourselves the full enjoyment of the blessings of life harvest come the fall. Let us now hike through each season of life as it corresponds to the seasons of each year. We will begin exploring the beginning of spring today and on subsequent Fridays we will travel through all four seasons taking our time to ponder what each season of life has in store for us. So today we will start with spring. Following the turbulence of winter comes a season of activity and opportunity that we call springtime. It is the seasons for entering the fertile fields of life with seed, knowledge, contentment, and determined effort. It is not a time to linger nor to ponder about the possibilities of failure. 
foolish is the one who would allow springtime to pass while dwelling on the memory of a successful crop last fall or the failure to reap last fall in spite of the massive efforts of last spring. It is a natural characteristic of springtime to present itself ever so briefly or to lull us into inactivity with its abundant beauty. Do not pause too long to soak in the aroma of the blossoming flowers lest you awake and find springtime gone with your seeds still in your sack. Spring does not care if you sow or sleep, nor does it care if you plant abundantly or meagerly. It does not care if you plant the fertile kernel of weeds or useless weed seeds. Neither spring, the soil, sun, nor other elements care if you plant at all. It will merely present itself as a time to take advantage. Springtime will not admonish you to plant, nor will it warn you about the consequences of not planting. For the tiller of the soil, springtime is without emotion. It is God who gave you the wisdom to rise up from your comfortable chair and to enter the fields at the right season. For the husband, father, wife, mother, or business person, springtime comes in a form of opportunity, possibly to enroll into a class, or to have a conversation with somebody at the proper moment, or to have the courage to change either occupation or residence, or perhaps to change your mind about something or someone. The springtime of life manifests itself infrequently. Do not allow springtime to pass while you sit idly, contemplating the severity of the past winter. With the intelligence, wisdom, and freedom of choice given to us as humans by God, exercise the division to plant in spite of the rocks, the weeds, or the other obstacles before us. The rocks, weeds, and thorns of the world cannot destroy all your seeds if you plant massively enough and intelligently enough in advance. In other words, to take full advantage of the spring, rid your soil of the weeds and rocks disguised as opinions of those around you in the form of worry, doubt, or pessimism. It is the fertilizer of faith and enthusiasm that will overcome the worst form of bugs and weeds. Listen not to the bearers of discouraging words, those who would have you to rest with them during the work season of spring. They will find themselves starving come the fall and the winter or begging from those who recognize that spring is a brief opportunity to work and a time to leave play for another season. There's so much more to share about spring as a season of life, but we have come to the end of today's trail, and we will have to wait patiently until Philosophy Friday next week. Understanding the cycle and seasons of life may be difficult for you, but these truths are immutable laws, no different than the law of gravity. You cannot defy that law, nor can you change the basic concepts that control the seasons of your life. Once we acknowledge this, then we can create our living legacy each day. Our next trek will be Motivation Monday, where we will discover the six steps to motivate yourself. So encourage your friends and family to join us, and then come along with us on Monday for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. That will finish our trek for today. Just as you enjoy these doses of wisdom, we ask you to help us to grow Wisdom Trek by sharing it with your family and friends through email, Facebook, Twitter, or in person when you meet with them, and invite them to come along with us for each trek. If you'd like to listen to any of the past daily treks, they are available at wisdom-trek.com. And don't forget to subscribe to Wisdom Trek so each trek will be downloaded to you automatically. And I would like to ask you to rate and review us on iTunes or Google Play so that others will find out about Wisdom Trek and join us. The journal for today's trek is available at wisdom-trek.com. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. As we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you on Monday.